about how encryption and integrity protection is actually done for messages both at the NAS le level and at the access stratum level. So let's just look at how uh, we can encrypt and integrity protect the NAS level messages. So we have the ciphering key and integrity protection key for the NAS level at the UE and the MME. Let's take a transmission that happens from the mobile to the MME. So, so this is a message that a NAS message that the mobile needs to send. So the first thing that the mobile does is that it will encrypt the data by creating a, basically what looks like a random number using the ciphering key and encryption algorithm and it typically XORs this data to get encrypted data. Once you get an encrypted data, there is an integrity protection algorithm that uses the integrity protection key. And this is typically a hash algorithm that is that is used, a hash algorithm using a key, so that you get a message authentication code based on the encrypted data. And the message authentication code is uh, is is appended to the data and that becomes the message that is being sent. So if any bit is changed in the data over here, it would not match up with the uh, with the message authentication code that has been provided along with the data. So this data along with the MAC is received at the MME. What the MME first does is it takes, it has the same ciphering key. It uses uh, an inverse of the integrity protection algorithm that was used to compute the, the MAC. It does the same, it does the same, actually not in inverse, it does the same uh, algorithm on, on the data. It comes up with what the expected MAC is. It compares it to the MAC that is provided in the message. And if these two match, that means this message has not been modified and is actually being created, at least a MAC has been created using the integrity protection key that is the only one that the mobile can could have had. So this is this message is integrity protected and it is it does the integrity protection matches up. And the next thing what the MME does, it would decipher or or, or decode the, the message by using the, the ciphering key and using the same encryption decryption algorithm to create the same random number. It XORs that random number with with the data that was provided and out you get is the NAS message that the UE had provided. So this is the high level flow for encryption and integrity protection of the NAS message. So it is encrypt and then integrity protect. So this is the, um, the, the flow of the encryption and integrity protection that is happening. There is a, there is a few there are a few more details that that we will that we would also cover that get added. So it's not just the ciphering key that is used for encrypting the the message. There is also a count which is a thirty two bit count and the count is actually equal to the, um, the 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 NAS sequence number, which is just eight bits, so so it takes the NAS sequence number, which is eight bits, but there is also an overflow that is sixteen bits long that is that is kept. So every time the NAS goes around beyond eight bits or beyond two fifty six, the overflow count gets incremented by one. So the both the UE and the MME keep track of the overflow count, which is a sixteen bit number, and then there is an eight bit. Uh, padding which is which is there so all of this 8 plus 16 plus 8 is 32 bits so this is 32 bit count is used in the encryption algorithm along with the data uh, for encrypting uh, for encrypting the data there is a direction bit that is used which is a one bit number and this direction bit is zero for uplink that means for all the messages that the mobile sends and encrypts, uh, this direction bit is set to zero. And for all the messages that the MME encrypts and sends, the direction bit is set to one. So in the downlink direction, it's one for downlink and zero for uplink. Um, right? Um, there is a bearer ID, which is a five bit number. And for NAS messages, the bearer ID is set to zero zero. So, so, so five, okay, if we say it's five bits, it's set to zero 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 
zero zero so it's, it's a five bit number and the length is the length of the um of 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 the nas message which is there so this is this length is provided into the encryption algorithm to create a random number which is exactly the same length as the data for xoring so so that is how the encryption algorithm works the, these are the parameters used by the encryption algorithm for for nas similarly on the decryption side they use it uses the same um, same uh, same variables also for for the de for the decryption side for the integrity protection you don't use the length because uh, because you don't because at the end you will end up with uh, the the message authentication code which is a hash so which is a fixed length message over here which is i think four bytes long so so, so this is four bytes long you don't need um, uh, the length going in but other other than that the count direction and bearer is uh, bearer ids are the same as what's used for the encryption algorithm and similarly on on the receiving side it's the count direction and bearer id that goes into the integrity protection algorithm to compute the the xmac so the details of the algorithms are provided in the 3gpp specifications and the key 3gpp specifications to look into is 33401 so TS 33401 is the security specification for LTE, which then has references and, and, and provides how, how these algorithms work. And it probably points to some other specifications that you would have to look into. That's a typical case with 3GPP specifications is that it's, it's, it's a tree of <laughs> specifications that, that you end up having to look at, right? So, so that's the uh, encryption and integrity protection at the NAS layer. And just to look at how the message actually looks after it's encrypted and integrity protected is whether it's an EMM or, 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 evolve, um, or evolve mobility message, mobility management message or a session management message, it first gets encrypted using the algorithm encryption algorithm then there is a sequence number and including the sequence number and this encrypted message what gets created is the integrity protected uh, the, the mac code using the integrity protection algorithm and you get the mac code which is four bytes long and then you put the headers on top of it and what you get is the nas message going down and we had this message format that we had covered during the um, LTE attached lectures where we looked at uh, the AS and NAS part of the LTE attached lecture. So this is so this is the format of of e of an encrypted and integrity protected NAS message which is sent uh, both from the mobile to the network and the network to the mobile. And as we said, this is an eight bit sequence number, but in the integrity protection algorithm, we use thirty two bits so that uh, we don't have the wraparound. W one of the things to make sure in all the security is that you, for an adversary, you wanna make sure you do not repeat the same random number twice. Um, if, if you take a course on cryptography, you, would, uh, you will come across, at least at a high level, what's the shannon's uh, theorem for complete secrecy and 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 which basically in at a high level says that to get perfect secrecy you need to use a random number only once if you use the same random number two times you are leaking information to the adversary and perfect secrecy means you don't want to leak any information to 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 your adversary and that's one of the main reasons why you want to make sure that uh, that the random numbers you generate don't repeat um, and 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 so if you've got a short sequence number you better make sure that you don't uh, you, you you don't you don't turn around and make make use of the same sequence number because you could end up having the same NAS message with the same sequence number and so you don't want to have the message authentication code to, to repeat every 256 messages right so so those are those are some of the kind of caveats to keep to keep track of and that's where they have the overflow count that is being used when the integrity protection is being done for for these NAS messages.